Hi guys, Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Today I'm doing a paid review. This is for Patrick. Hi Arch, big fan of your channel channel, and I would like some insight and advice. I've sent you 25 US because I know you don't do this fucking shit for free. Bit of background, my name is Patrick. Uh, you can use my name if you like and I'm 27. Uh, residential solar consultant living in Texas. I started collecting watches. Shit is at the tail end of 2017 and have been through about 20 or so models of Seiko divers. My first mechanical watch was a Seiko SKX which seemed like a solid watch and began my interest in different movement and component material involving involved in watchmaking. I started as many do by watching um, AGV on his channel which i do enjoy between the bits of shameless squale plugging however after finding your channel uh which your channel kept appearing as recommended videos on the side thank you google analytics um after watching your channel uh and, and and especially a video in which you ask the question, is it a watch you would want to inherit or pass down to your kids? I sold off nearly my entire collection of shitters to fund the purchase of a couple of slightly better pieces. Forgive me, Pontiff, for I know you will judge me harshly. I shall try to explain. Number one. Number one. Oris Diver 65 in Deville Blue on Blue and yellow Oris NATO, purchased second-hand, unworn for several hundred under retail, about a thousand dollars. I love the vintage feel and huge bubble sapphire. The watch is comfortable and despite being powered by a Salita movement, I find it keeps very good time and pairs well with blue jeans and a white shirt on lazy days spent around town with my daughter. Number two, number two. Number two, Longines Heritage Diver 1967 Chronograph. I know now how you feel about Longines, but at the time I purchased it, I was just coming out of my Seiko Stupa uh, and found this new for about 1900 1200 bucks under retail. It's an ETA column wheel chronograph and is quite beautiful in my opinion. It wears well on the black alligator strap. And from what I've seen on Chrono 24 and Fleabay, it has seemed to hold its value on the second-hand market. Number three, number three, number three, Grand Seiko SBGX-115. sorry, SBGX This is probably to be, this is probably going to be the most upsetting to you on two accounts. For one, it's a quartz shooter. Secondly, although I paid 500 under retail, for a brand new example for this watch, I still paid around 4000 for it, for which I could have bought a head-only Explorer 2, no box or papers. I saw this watch and fell in love immediately. I love the way a white dial and black bezel look together. And for a moment, I considered buying the Explorer 2 and installing a black GMT bezel. But to modern Rolex would undoubtedly be an unforgivable sacrilege for which I could not allow myself to perform. The 9F movement that powers this watch has a few cool features such as thermal compensation and super sealed compartment housing the movement which only needs servicing once every 50 years. The idea of a grab and go luxury watch that I could wear daily and fly under the radar that with was too appealing to pass up. My additional will either be a Tudor Black Bay Bronze or a GMT Master Pepsi Bezel. I'd like to know if you think I should add the Tudor first and then go Rolex or just skip straight to the GMT Master. Sorry for the fucking novel of the email and thanks for making great shit. Don't let those nasty vicious fuckers tell you off. Regards, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for your email. And I gotta tell you, this is quite a um, quite an interesting... I, I've got to be completely honest with you. The diver... The Oris Diver 65. I kind of like the look of. Okay, I I 
I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Oris, but <clears throat> the Oris Diver 65, yeah, yeah. Oris is a unpretentious Swiss brand. It, it's kind of entry-level Swiss. Uh, it's a bit like a Skoda, a Skoda in the car market. You know, it's uh, it's not trying to be an Audi, but it's... It, it's a, it, it's reasonable. You can't you can't fault it. I don't I don't hate that RS sixty. I think it's a cool watch. It's a hip, very hipster, very hipsterish watch. That I'm not cool enough to pull it off. I'd have to lose thirty kilos and be a fuckload cooler than I than I am. But uh, I I, I, I kind of get it. You know, I don't I don't hate the Oris. I think I I'm 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 kind of. Um, it's not something I'd fucking buy myself. <laughs> Don't fucking get me wrong. Fuck me then. It's not something I'd buy myself. But it's got a bit of a charm to it. A bit of a bit of a charm. But uh, I would I wouldn't fucking buy one myself. But it's it's uh, it's okay. It's okay. The Longines Heritage Diver. I got to be honest with you. A lot of Longines are garbage. But this here. Okay, it's an ETA. Okay. Um, by the way, I just forgot, you mentioned in the Oris Diver it's using a Salita movement. Guess what? My, my Monaco uses a Salita movement. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Then we're, we're talking, uh, the long sheens. It's a column wheel. Column wheel chronograph is... Fucking expensive. That's pretty amazing bang per buck. I actually had Donnie Haynes talking about this one not so long ago. It's not quite your just usual shitter. It's not your usual shitter. A column wheel chronograph and that price point is pretty damn amazing. It's pretty damn amazing. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the Grand Seiko. Yeah, quartz is, is hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, but I gotta tell you the, the quality of Grand Seiko's pretty damn good. Now I gotta tell you what you need to do to fix the cement to bomb this collection is get two or one really amazing watch. And there's only one brand you could go to. Rolex! And if you're gonna add two watches, it'd be Rolex and Tudor. So my advice to you, I tell you this now, in all honesty, I would be adding, I reckon I would be adding, first thing up I would do would be a Tudor Black Bay. Uh, the Bronzo. The Bronzo, believe it or not, the Tudor Black Bay as a Bronzo is pretty damn good for a bronze piece. I mean, you look at what Pam charges for bronze. Even Oris, they got the Carl Bashir. They want... Carl Bashir chronograph. What big fucking dollars for it. And uh, I, I think the Tudor Black Bay bronze is a bargain. So I would probably snap all that up. I think that's a really cool dive watch. Then, then you can add a, uh, a Rolex. Um, I, I'd probably say the best value for money i mean i mean the, the the rolex pepsi the new one it's going to be fucking impossible to get a vintage one expensive i'd probably go 40 mil 40 mil 40 mil fuckers 40 mil 40 mil explorer 2 get it you've already confessed to me you like white dials get that 40 mil Explorer 2. Absolutely cool. So that way there you have a Tudor Black Bay as your dive watch and a Rolex as a GMT function watch. I reckon that could be the cement that bonds this collection together because if you've got the Tudor and the Rolex, the Grand Seiko, yeah, it kind of, it's kind of, it's, it, that, that's acceptable. The long jeans with the column wheel chronograph. How could you fucking not love a column wheel chronograph? And um, the Oris. The Oris is kind of a hipster 
funky sort of watch. The only advice I'd give you, I personally, I wouldn't go for the bronze. I personally would not go for the bronze. I personally would say to you, I reckon the coolest, this is, okay, I'm biased, I admit I, I own this one and I love it to death. The coolest Black Bay, the Tudor, Tudor Black Bay Burgundy. I reckon that is the fucking coolest Black Bay. I love the Burgundy bezel. Um, I love the faux rivets. It's just big, it's chunky. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is where I would go instead of the bronze. Now, I'm not saying the bronze is wrong, because if you want a bronze one, it's pretty damn good value. Pretty damn good value indeed. But that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. And uh, i got to tell you, I, I think if you got those two, a Tudor and a Rolex, into that collection, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. As a combo meal deal, five-piece, five-piece combo meal deal, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. So, yeah, I'm all in favour. So there you go, fuckaroonies. There you go. I'm in favour. See? See, there you go. So, uh, I quite like it. Patrick, I quite like it. I apologise for the delay in doing this video. I've had a few personal problems. Homelessness in the family. I've had depression. I've had... Everything has been... Fuck this. Fuck this completely. So uh, thank you for your patience. And um, I can see this turning into a really nice collection. And I didn't mind those pieces. I really didn't mind it. So there you go. Fuckaroonies. I'm Paul Pluter. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Fuckaroonies. Fuckaroonies. Here are six watches I've been offered. They offered to put my name on the dial. They offered to make it exclusive to the Archie Luxury channel. They'd do anything to climb into bed with me. And I said no. That's right. I said no. Oh, and don't forget, fuckaroonies, like, subscribe, and tell your fuckhead friends. And don't forget to mention the Archie Luxury Travel Channel. That's where I'm doing live shows, fuckers. Wow.